So welcome uh, to Team Dorp and welcome to Francis van Hasselt. Uh, Francis is a designer and an entrepreneur, uh, and she's been collaborating with artisans in rural communities in South Africa. And she's weaving a story about the origin of textiles, in particular with conscious mohair. So we look forward to, to hearing from you. Thank you. Let me just see if this works. You're in one of the rooms. I wonder if you're in one of I our am. bedrooms. So, hi, um, from Dorp, Gail, um, who's the owner and character of Dorp, sends all her regards to you, Philip and Lee, sends her love. Um, yeah, very, very fortunate and feel full circle to be here speaking today where you guys were in lockdown. Um, yeah, so I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. And um, it's, a, it's a huge privilege to have been asked to speak on this topic, Farm to Fabric. It, it very much um, embodies what we do and why we create in the way that we do. Um, before I start, I want to thank Lee and Philip and the entire team for, for putting this event together. And just the enormous amount of care and time and effort that that takes, but on a bigger scale, just for creating a platform um, like this one, where we can connect and, and really share our stories. To just briefly introduce myself, my name is Frances Van Hasselt, and I'm an entrepreneur focusing specifically on developing mohair textiles in South Africa. Every step of what we do from the start to the finish is made by the most incredible women artisans in rural parts of our country. And from farm to fabric, we kind of celebrate sustainable practices. And also we try to preserve and celebrate traditional craftsmanship in these rural communities. Oops. I think before we start, it's really important that we all know <laughs> what mohair is. So mohair is the fleece of an angora goat. Um, often I find people confuse the angora goat and mohair with angora rabbit. And it's really important to know that the two have absolutely nothing in common. The only similarity between them is their name. And that's because the goat and the rabbit originated from the same area in Turkey called Ankara, which used to be known as Angora. But mohair really has some of the most phenomenal qualities and this really special and interesting South African heritage. It's one of the world's most ancient, exclusive and really naturally sustainable fibers to work with. Uh, it's often referred to in passing as what they call the diamond fiber. And this really I suppose is due to the fact that the supply of mohair is so small, so the scarcity thereof, and then on top of it, it has these really beautiful characteristics. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but just to mention a few. Um, mohair as a fiber has got this beautiful curl and texture and natural luster, which then when it's put into a fabric form, it gives fabric this beautiful luxe and silky look and feel. It's incredibly light as a fiber and it's breathable and crease resistant, but at the same time, really strong and durable. Um, lots of us have been talking about yarn construction and in terms of yarn, it's a fantastic ingredient fiber. And by this, I mean, it just, it blends really beautifully with other uh, animal fibers like cashmere, alpaca and wool, and also plant-based fibers. And then just lastly, one of the main reasons that mohair gets used is for its diability. Because it's got this, this luster and this kind of curl and character, it, um, it really absorbs dye and makes color come to life. Um, so now I wanna talk about the really, for me, beautiful and unique, uh, South African heritage that this, this fiber has. So many South Africans 
don't recognize this, but, um, or they don't even know, but South Africa produces the large majority of the world's mohair supply, probably up to 60%. And then within this, it's geographically kind of congregated in an area called the Karoo, which is a semi-arid region of the country. That's where my family farm with Angora goats, and that's where we have our studio. What is interesting in the case of mohair is that because the supply is so small and it's quite a difficult fiber to work with, there's been really little economic reason for there to be processing houses built outside of those processing houses that already exist in South Africa. So as a result, most of the world's raw material or raw mohair then comes to South Africa to be processed. And by this, I really mean opened, washed, carded, and combed. And then unfortunately, 80% of the supply then leaves the country in a really raw form. So very little gets done locally to beneficiate that raw material and also to kind of build on our textile industry here. So I just felt that if we're going to celebrate mohair locally and be this home of mohair around the world, we really need to start creating exceptional local end products that celebrate these qualities that I talk about and this really special South African heritage. I just want to talk briefly about this mohair industry and what I found so moving now being part of it is that there's been this broad understanding that we are living in a changing time and a great sense of uh, togetherness when it comes to a commitment to growth. And I think this is most seen in the impact that farming has on the environment. And knowing, coming from a farm where I see it, I, South African mohair farmers have been practicing regenerative, regenerative farming practices long before it's been this current topic that really needs to be addressed. And this is just purely because it makes sense. Like it makes sense to look after your land it, and preserve it and your animals. It makes economic sense to farm in this way um, specifically if you are under the most unimaginable drought conditions that has faced um, South African farmers over the last few years. But being this really niche and, and small farming industry in South Africa, it has offered a really interesting and I think valuable opportunity in that there are only pr probably under a thousand farmers in South Africa and so there's this ability to stay really connected with each other and grow together and also implement really necessary change relatively quickly. And I think the most clear example of this is just um, the fact that most mohair farmers in South Africa are now certified under what is called the responsible mohair standard. And that's just a global standard for ethical and sustainable farming practices. But it is such an important tool, I, what we've been hearing throughout the day and in general in, in the bigger fashion textile uh, conversation is that this tool helps as a raw material supplier, helps us connect into this global value chain, but also to have collaborations that are really exciting and forward thinking and interesting. So, so that's really, really a positive. Um, to give you a brief background on the South African textile landscape, um, unfortunately, as a country, we have high poverty and unemployment rates. Some would call it, we have a crippled formal textile sector, which has left many of these artisans unemployed and unable to use their skill. But what we have tried to do is take that as a given and really look at what are the strengths and the unique skills that are specific to the socio-economic and environmental makeup of the, of the South African textile industry. And when you look at that, we have 
the most wonderful mohair raw material in the world. We've got these great processing houses. And even though we don't have a formal textile sector, we have got thousands of the most incredible traditional craftsmen. And then when you combine all of these strengths with design and excellent quality, you can produce a product that can really hold its own on any stage. And in a world where everyone is being influenced by what they see, I mean, where it's so transparent on social media and through the internet, it offers a very rare opportunity to, to not have to concern yourself with that because what you do is so specific to your environment and the skill set that you have there that it, it becomes almost impossible to authentically replicate it anywhere else. Um, the concept of farm to fabric is very much woven into my being. I had the great privilege of growing up on a mohair farm in the Karoo. Being a little girl enchanted by fashion and fabrics, I definitely wanted to escape into all things city and bright lights. That's where I thought I, you know, I would find it. And my dad used to laugh and take me into the felt, which is an Afrikaans word for the natural environment of the Karoo. And he would explain to me that if I was to understand where fabrics or fashion came from, I needed to spend more time with him in nature, really the starting point from which everything else follows. Uh, I really, I am incredibly grateful for this, this really simple lesson, but it is, um, by far the most valuable and probably primary principle from which we create. Um, we feel strongly that sustainable circular economies do not start in the factories or in our case, in a studio. For us, the process starts with rainfall and then the delicate ecosystem of the desert plant life the quality of the ground and the earth and the role of herdsmen and the importance of having healthy animals in order to produce quality mohair. From this step, from the raw material, we then move into the washing and the carding and the spinning until finally that yarn ends up on the loom, which for us is very much the final steps of a very intricate and codependent supply chain. We feel that once you understand this connectivity between us and nature and all the skills and actors needed to get from farm to fabric, you think differently and you make differently. You definitely don't need more and more and you become incredibly respectful and selective as to the timelessness of that piece. It really turns, for me, uh, a simple textile into an invaluable homemaker, which we hope gets passed down from one generation to the next to also build their own homes and weave their own thoughts into and, and memories into these threads. Um, it's really important for, for me that we on panels and we having discussions like this, um, because I believe that it's time that consumers start to recognizing that their, their buying power has a trickle down impact on a long line of people and on the welfare of animals and ultimately the preservation of our land. Knowing where the roots of our fibers come from, I feel a really great responsibility to finish the final product in a similar way. Um, so for us, the, the end product is as important as the origin, the makeup and the process. And the origin of mohair and the mohair story for us lies in the Karoo. Uh, taking our design inspiration from this place, where nature is most certainly the defining element, 
it really informs every aspect of what we try to do. I mean, the perfection of nature's effortless composition and the tactility and the coloring remains for me the most humbling and the best teacher you can have with probably the most challenging lesson to realize and, and, and implement in our work being that of simplicity. When you live and you work and you breathe in the desert, there is very little to distract you from noticing the light and the scorch of a midday sun and then the slow relief of an evening breeze. And then if you can see in this image, those vast velvet skylines. What is interesting for me is that the Karoo is home to Moher the world over and that the fiber itself starts to reflect the characteristics of its environment. So for us to try and um, showcase the land, showcase the animal and the lands and the hands that made each piece, tactility and texture, and texture becomes kind of fundamental to achieving this. So in our work, I hope you can see here the, the irregularity of hand spun yarn and hand weaving and hand knitting, we hope helps to convey the subtle shifts that we see happen throughout the day of this Karoo vast horizon. So tactility, working with raw natural material in old ways with new design is very much a characteristic of our work. And I know that it's been sp spoken a lot on this platform um, about technology and the reverse pull towards handmade. And as a studio, studio, I can't express how much we have noticed this, that in this life where we're doing everything through our screens like today, there has definitely been that we've seen through our, um, through our clients and customers, this strong need and desire for things that are textural, that they are connected to the earth. They have the softness of, of the animal and the hands that made it. And it's the inexplicable feeling when you put something on or it's in your home that stems from this making process, which, which we are craving and, um, it's impossible to get that through mass produced objects. So I really hope that the, the principles and the philosophies that, um, that we've been speaking about help to form part of this ripple effect of change, a movement back to nature and agriculture and these ancient knowledge banks, foraging threads, really knowing where every fiber originates from, making without wasting and creating pieces which capture this feeling of home, of that which is simple and that which is soft and safe and familiar. To end off on this concept of farm to fabric, I wanna talk about these desert mindscape tapestries that we did. Um, and I hope this captures the, the link. So every panel here is made from mohair, from a specific aged animal and from a specific region in South Africa or Lesotho. And we've kept the mohair completely raw and then hand spun it and then hand wove it into these panels. And we, the reason why we kept it raw is really to show that intricate connectivity that nature has on the final fabric. So if a panel, for example, has been made on a, from a certain aged animal, so an adult goat, for example, it's like humans, their hair is coarser, it's stronger, as opposed to a young goat, which like us, that hair is finer and softer. The humidity or the plant life of the area that that animals come from, it's the same as us. If we go to a humid place, our hair changes. Our diet affects our skin, it affects our hair. And that's exactly the same in an animal. So what it eats for breakfast, the environment, its age, all of this impacts the mohair and then ultimately the final fall function and feel 
of the fabric. And then, so we had these panels and then I did a basic design taken from my walks. I walk in the Karoo every day, whether it's inspired by this desert, uh, very simple, thick mud walled architecture kind of block or shifting grass or a crumpled up piece of wire. I sketched a basic design. And then what I love about these pieces is that the artisans then, they get to interpret the design into stitching. So I, it's as exciting for me to see these pieces unfold and how they inter interpret it into, into a stitch. So these artisans work from either their home or the studio, and they really are using needle and thread to stitch their way through what I would call their minds meandering thoughts. Um, they're the reflection of the feeling of these women stitching their way through the day using textiles and thread as a way of capturing or showing their inner thoughts onto these canvases of fabric. So for me, uh, these, these panels are the homes of the souls of the makers. They're the fiber of our animals. They droplets of rain in the Karoo that is so celebrated. It's the crunch of a fehi or desert plant for breakfast. And really that openness to imagine the vast unknown and the simple joy that we find in, in the in and out motion of darning our realities into these uh, nonsensical raw textile roadmaps of where they have come from and how we wish to tread into tomorrow. Before I end off uh, with a film that um, Philip's gonna show, it's a, our latest uh, mohair woven collection with a fabulous friend and fellow South African designer, Leandi Mulder. And I hope the film encapsulates this idea of origin. It's really, it's a celebration of the land. It's a celebration of the animal. It's textures, chunky, fine, irregular yarns that try in our way express this harmonizing and conflicting elements of the desert. It's this soft brush stroke skies meets this harsh scorched earth. So I'll leave you with that. I'll thank you for creating some still in a crazy Saturday to join us and share our stories that I feel from listening to everyone have so many common threads and yet each one so specific to that individual and the environment that they find themselves in. So thank you from South Africa. It's been a real privilege and I hope you enjoy the film. Frances, you, um, you move us all. The way you express is amazing. Thank you. Thank you.
So thank you again to Francis for such a beautiful, beautiful presentation and transporting us to the Karoo.